if you want to know what humans were meant to eat, you have to take it back to what we are at our core. You have to look, you know, just like in biology, if you want to know what an animal eats, you start to look at, at the body, you start to look at how it's put together, what specialties it has in terms of does it, you know, does it have claws or does it have large fangs? And you can find out and get a good idea of what its diet is. When you look at the human body, it's very confusing when you look at what people eat today and then you look at the body. If you were from another planet and you were trying to guess what humans ate, you would never guess that they ate meat at all. Um, you would look at the hands and notice that they're very dexterous and they have a lot of precision and they're very sensitive and they're excellent for picking fruit for very delicate and intricate things. We don't have claws. We don't have fangs. I mean, we have, we have a canine. It's, it's hardly visible. I think horses have sharper teeth um, in their mouths than we do that have to be filed down. We don't even have to file ours. So, in looking at the physical body, we show absolutely no sign of consuming other animals and yet we do and then we wonder why we have so many health problems. Can you feed an animal something that it was never meant to eat? Yes, you can. But what is the consequence? This is exactly what's happening to our species. We are feeding it the wrong things and then we're sitting back and trying to figure out why it's not working. And that's where we're confused. We're not like other animals. I am not like my dog where he eats one thing, I eat another. We are not the same in that way. He is designed to eat certain things and it's clearly visible. You can just look at his teeth and know what he eats. You can look at mine and know what I should be eating. And it's not what the average diet is. And so when we analyze what is quote unquote natural, what we should be having, too often uh, we look back in time but not far enough. We seem to look back, you know, if we get to the Renaissance, that's already amazing. Most people only go back a few, a few generations and say, oh, well, this is the way we've always eaten. Well, you can't really represent all of humanity through just a few centuries of time. You really have to go farther than that to see what the root was. Because just because you have done something all of your life, it doesn't make it correct. There are many habits that we each have our own habits that are bad. And we've had them our whole life. It doesn't mean that they're right. So just because you've eaten meat your whole life doesn't mean that it's correct. It just means it's what you've always done. It's what you were taught. It's how you were raised. It's the way I was raised. And there's there's nothing uh, to feel guilty about. That's, that's just the way that, that things are. That's how we learn. But you do have to question where things come from and how we even got into this predicament in the first place. And so you really have to go back very, very far in time to find that out. Now, many people nowadays for their health um, questions and guidance, oddly enough, they look to Europe. I'm not really sure why, because Europe is notorious, and not in recent times, you know, even in the Dark Ages, notorious for having health problems. I mean, look at um, Ponce de Leon and finding the fountain of youth. What was it? Spring water. Um, because when you're drinking beer and wine all the time, of course you're going to have health problems and find that how you magically extend your life when you drink more water. Um, nothing, nothing surprising there. But it just goes to show how ignorant we are when we look back and try to test our theory of what we should be eating. And so you really have to go farther than European civilization. You have to go farther than that. And I take it 
all the way back to where some people go, but they stop. They go back to the caveman era, uh, Neolithic. So you start looking at cavemen and you think, well, this is what cavemen ate. Um, first of all, when you hunt for your food, you don't eat meat every day. You can look at a strict carnivore, and even those are not really as strict as you think. But even so, you can look at a, at a lion and say, well, this lion eats nothing but meat. I mean, the animal's stomach is completely filled with grasses, and they eat that too, so really they're not as strict carnivores as you would think. But regardless of that, they don't eat every day. They, they can go for long periods of time. So even looking at that, you could easily say we were never meant to eat meat every day, let alone with every meal like we do. Even so, if you take it farther than that, and you can look at animals for this guidance, when the world is in its bounty, when spring is in its full bloom and there are berries and fruits abound. What do most animals tend to eat? Look at bears, for example. Um, they are not gorging on deer. They're gorging on berries and nuts. And you can look at the human species the same way. The only time naturally we actually eat meat is in times of famine when food becomes scarce. Winter time, for instance, uh, when you, you look at many civilizations, uh, so that is the trend. In winter, you eat a lot of meat. Why? Because most of the vegetation is, is frozen, especially in the north. Um, nature is not in its full bounty. And so you still have to survive. You still have to make it through to the next year. And so you choose the not so healthy, but will keep you alive animal instead. So really meat becomes a survival device. It becomes the thing that you go to when there is nothing else. And yet in today's society, it seems to be the one thing that we go to all the time. And yet we wonder why we have so many health problems. We actually, our bodies have great difficulty digesting and processing animals. Uh, there are plenty of studies that show this, and you can do your own study, uh, you know, just how do you feel after you eat that meal? Do you feel sleepy? Do you feel tired? Could you get up and run around? No. If you were to eat a vegan meal instead, you would have energy just like all of the others do, just like deer do. You eat and you can easily run if you need to, to get away. So the way that our bodies process the food is very different. You look at our intestinal tract and it's very long. In fact, it's too long to be a meat eater because it's really not what we are. We can, we can because we're, you know, we survive like many other animals. It's just like cannibalism. I mean, we could eat each other, but there's really no no need to. It's, it's only a, a survival thing. So that's where I think people are missing the boat. You really need to analyze what is, what's really working and what really isn't. And for me, I had to actually make the change to feel the benefits. It was a leap of faith, it really was. I was just hopeful that it would correct my health problems because I had health problems that I really didn't know how else to treat it and I did not want to continue the way that I was because I knew my life would be short. And so faced with that, you know, the medical industry not being able to help me, I decided, well, I have nothing else to lose so it was mostly faith that it that it would help and it did but I'm not gonna lie I didn't go into it knowing that it would cure every problem I had and some I really didn't know it was just a ditch effort and and it's a learning process but 
as you go through it, you start to feel the changes and you instantly know you're doing the right thing. And that's what really keeps me going is every time I make the right choice, with every meal that I make the right choice, I feel better and I know I'm giving my body what it really needs, what it really wants. And after about two weeks, I completely lost any cravings of the things I used to eat because my body recognized it was getting what it needed and there was no need to try and get it from something else. It was satisfied. So the cravings were gone. It does take a little time. It's not the first meal you eat, you know. Uh, I think it was about two weeks. But the changes happen and they're undeniable. So for anyone who isn't really sure, that's fine, that's normal. It's, it, there's a lot of information, it's all very confusing. And you're also fighting a part of yourself uh, out of habit. It's the way you've always eaten and now you're being told that it's wrong. It's hard to take. So don't take it all at once. Choose one thing out of your diet that you will change, you know. I will not be having eggs for breakfast anymore. But keep everything else the same. And then when you feel comfortable with that, then you can say, I will not be drinking soda anymore. I will just be having water. And then do that. And little by little, you start getting rid of the things in your diet that aren't serving you no good. They're not doing you any, any no nutritional value, doing no good at all. They're only putting you on more prescription drugs and spending money on, on things you just don't need. And really, modern medicine can't save you. It can prolong your life a little bit, you know, we can, we can keep you on a machine, we can keep pumping you full of drugs, but I'm not really sure if that's the existence you want. I sure don't. I find it's better if I just stay away from it altogether. And that's what I've done, but certainly not overnight. It has been a process. And I went from eating, not necessarily what everyone else say. I always considered myself healthy. I was never into fried food ever. It was a sin back then. But, I, you know, I certainly ate turkey on Thanksgiving. I certainly ate my share of chicken. So, you know, I ate what I would consider a normal, you know, quote unquote healthy, what everyone else eats, very normal. I went from that to a flexitarian where I was starting to weed things out. I couldn't really call myself a vegetarian, but I was trying. And then I did become a vegetarian. That was all fine and good. I was still having milk in my coffee. I was, you know, I, I was still um, doing the dairy. But, um, but then I finally, uh, finally quit that and realized that it really wasn't hard at all actually very easy and I wish I did it sooner because the benefits are just amazing I, I'm still processing it I'm still thinking about it and I just can't believe how much better I am now and there are things that um, they just have to happen for you to realize that you're doing a good thing um, my my menstrual cycles used to be so bad, so bad. And it's because of the milk, you know, I, it's the, you know, it's a, it's a pregnant female, it's a pregnant animal and you are drinking its milk. And so you're getting those hormones. And that's why my cycles were so heavy and so painful that when I stop drinking milk, it's like, I don't even know I'm having it anymore. They're so light. There's no problem. I mean, I would never consider taking Midol or taking any drug now. I mean, there's no point. It's nothing. But before, it was just, I really battled with it. I didn't want to take a painkiller, but, you know, sometimes you say, well, you know what, I got I have a crazy day today. I really don't want to deal with this. I'll just take it and bite the bullet. I don't even have to do that anymore. There's no compromise. Um... But there are 
so many other benefits to it. My skin is so much better. And I know this because it's my skin, because I take care of it. So I can tell. These are things that I couldn't tell you and you would be sold on, but when it happens to you, you are. And that's the difference. It, when it happens to you, you know you're doing the right thing. But when you're told, you're just like, oh, well, you know, whatever, that's, that's great for you. So it's different. Um, so if this isn't moving, it's not surprising because it's not you. But um, sex drive is better, of course, because milk is, you know, that's prego hormones again. You know, that doesn't do you any good in terms of that. So another benefit, um, not to mention that it causes breast cancer. So, I mean, that's, you know, that's the top of the ladder. But the small little things, they mean so much that when you no longer have those problems anymore, you just look back and say, wow, you know, why did I, why did I even put up with that? And the answer is because I didn't know, or at least I had a hunch, but I didn't look into it because it's scary. Because you think about it and you say, well, now, now this makes me question everything. Now this makes me wonder how I've been taking care of myself my whole life. And I don't know if I'm ready for that. Those are the kind of things that surface, but if you're not ready, you need to get ready. Or a situation like I was in will happen where you will be told by a doctor, if you do not seek medical help, this will happen to you. And you don't have to wait until that moment because sometimes you can't reverse the effects fast enough. So don't wait for it to get to that point. There are plenty of things that can be corrected now that are not life-threatening. And so take that with you. Little changes. Don't feel guilty over it. Guilt will do you no good. Arm yourself with good information. Not biased. Nothing from the food industry. They're selling you a product. Of course they're gonna tell you it's great. Don't believe any of it, it's garbage. Get good information, unbiased. And decide for yourself. And then listen to your body when you make the changes and you will know.